Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I am happy you're here with me today and of course so grateful that you're sharing this space with me and your time with me. Today we are going to talk about transforming your relationship with marketing. Oh my goodness, that phrase has so much power in it, right? There's a lot of mindset that goes into marketing. And my guest today is going to help us navigate some of that, but also give us some tips and strategies on how we can transform our relationship for marketing and build our businesses to that next level. So if you're at six figures, think of seven figures. If you're mid to high, um, under six figures, Think about you're going to the next level and these strategies are going to help you get there because there's no holding back whenever you have the right mindset and you have the right strategies in place, especially when it comes to marketing. Marketing is really the, I guess, most or biggest necessity in your business in order to go to the next level. So that's what we're diving into today. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome my guest, Fabian. Welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much for having me, Robin. Fabian, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey? I mean, you have had quite a journey and you are incredibly successful. And I would love for you to share with the listeners where you started, how you became an entrepreneur and what brought you to where you are today, helping women. And and I think you work with men too, right? Just a couple you... great guys, but honestly, yeah. it's like 99% Mostly women women. Yeah. Like me, mostly women. Um, yay. Us girls stick yay. together. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, just, would you tell the listeners a little bit about your journey? Because you have been a seven figure entrepreneur for many, many years. Yes. But you are, you're solid. There's no fluff. There's no like nonsense. Like you are, just really strategic and and believe in the the power of individuals and our our gifts and our ability to transform our lives and make that much yeah, money absolutely. just by following strategies. So I would love for you to share some of that with the listeners. Yeah, I was actually talking to somebody about this yesterday uh, and he was asking me, you know, do you do you believe in like, you know, slick? I'm like, no. When you've been in business for 22 years, you work with tens of thousands of women, you regularly get people to, to a million in their business. You don't need slick. You don't need, you know, jazz hands you have gravitas you have proof that it that your methodology works so no no need for all of that i'll make the story super short because i could yeah (laughs) any story can be an accordion Um, i started uh, business coaching 22 years ago wow and there aren't many people who can say that no um it was 1999 i'd left my corporate job in manhattan to open up a private nutrition practice and i I didn't get enough clients but what i learned in being self-employed is my clients were getting great results but i just didn't have enough of them i wasn't generating enough cash flow And I also had realized that I'm unemployable now. Like I can't go back to working for in in corporation or for anybody else. And so I had to figure out what to do, Robin. And just long story short, I created for myself the client attraction system and I filled my practice in eight months. Now you have to understand that most people don't fill their practice to eight months uh, under three to four years minimum. So I had figured out a way to do it in eight months. All, uh, just other people started asking, like, how did you do that? So I started just sharing some practices. I became a business coach and I started sharing my client attraction, marketing, authentic marketing uh, processes to people really like this is when we started coaching over the phone. So I was doing it all over the world. Then I got to six figures and I had a new set of problems. It was that I was overworking. I was doing everything one to one. Um, I I had some support from a VA, but my mindset wasn't there to fully accept the help. I wasn't attracting world class help, although they were wonderful individuals. It was what I realized is that what got me to six figures was never going to take me to multiple six figures or even seven figures. 
And what I've realized since is it's a totally different formula. I, I realized that you have to do less better. It's counterintuitive, but to get from six figures to multiple six figures and even a million in your business, you have to work much less and think more. Happy to unpack that today or another time. And in one year, in 2008, during the world financial crisis, I tripled my business coaching revenues from 380,000 a year to a million. It was actually a million and 15,000. And I did it in nine months. And, uh, you know, I, at, at that time, I had two little kids at home and I was about to have a third one on the way. And women were like, what, how, like, how did you do that? <laughs> And I reverse engineered the process and I realized that it came to eight things that I had leveraged in my business. And I started teaching those things to six figure business owners, women. I still teach how to the client attraction system, how to get to six figures, but the sweet spot is how do you apply, like, how do you fully apply these eight activators and do it with consistency so that it is proven guaranteed to work? And I've since been teaching this leveraged business methodology to um, thousands of women. And every year we have women who you would see at the at the grocery store, like you could be behind them on the line and they've got their kids in the cart and they're, you know, come on, don't grab that candy bar. And you have no idea that she's making a million or more a year in her business. She's just a regular gal mm -hmm. who has a big heart, who wants to help more people. And she's applied these principles and she's generating a million or more a year. And I put all the steps of this eight step methodology into a book called The Leveraged Business, how you can go from overwhelmed at six figures. That's the book. <laughs> how you can go from overwhelmed at six figures to seven figures with your life back. And this is what I teach um, all over the world. And it's, it's like, it's amazing just to see the lasting transformation but still today, after 22 years, I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah. I, so well. I love your story. And I, I remember reading your, your journey and how you were in New York and you made this transition and how you had to focus on your mindset. And I think every single entrepreneur goes through a similar journey where yeah. we set out to do this thing, but we don't realize how stinking hard it is yeah. and how isolating it can be. And it really does play a lot of games with your mindset and your belief system. And so really, and that's part of your methodology. So would you just share with us those eight things? And then I want to dive specifically into the, the transformation with marketing mindset, because I think that is, uh, that's something that we haven't really had deep conversations about on the show, but I really loved your chapter in the book about it. And so I, and I think it has a lot of, um, I guess, powerful information that lends to transformation. So if you would just list out those eight things, so the listeners know they can always pick up the book or follow you to learn yes. more about each one, but I want to focus on the marketing after we do that. I, I, I will cover all, uh, I will list all eight right now. And I just want to put a caveat out there. They sound basic. And there's this false confidence that sometimes happens, if I may, when somebody writes down all eight, they're like, oh yeah, I know that. The thing is, you, you don't really know that until you've fully implemented it and you're living it every day uh, from this new identity, this new mindset, this new way of showing up. So just, it's, it's about, this is why it takes two years to implement this whole thing because it is actually a lot more complex than it mm -hmm. sounds. Complex in meaning there's more depth. So number one, leverage your team. It's about hiring world-class people you trust, 
hiring strategically, not just like somebody with a pulse. And um, so, and, and then you focus on exponential growth because they've taken over things. The second is leverage your systems. Uh, it's all about moving away from a one person business to being the leader of a process driven company where everything is documented. And um, when you have the team, world class team you trust running the systems, this leads to the third one, which is leverage your time. This is not about time management. This is about removing all the things on your to do list that are day to day operations, because frankly, you are not wired to be dealing with day to day operations. You're here to do your unique genius divine work in the world. And a lot of that has to do with thinking, thinking and working on exponential growth activities, not putting out fires. So once you've leveraged a team who runs the systems, gives you your time back so you can work on exponential growth activities, you start focusing on shifting how you deliver your work in the world so that you are not working one to one hours for dollars. This is about leveraging your intellectual property, your systems, the way that you deliver work to your clients so they get results with you, guaranteed results with you. They can't get anywhere else because nobody else provides it in this way. There's a formula for that. And then making them feel what they can't feel anywhere else, including at home and then that's your leveraged business model so you've got the team the systems the you're using your time to shift your business model now you can work with so many more people working less now we have to look at leveraging your marketing because before it was onesies twosies you know you can only handle so many clients now you can handle hundreds, perhaps even thousands of clients and customers. And I know if you're in your place right now, you may hear this and say, no, 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 Fabian, not in my business. But yes, in your business, there isn't a single business that we can't shift to the business model to work with 10 times the number of clients or customers. At that point, you need to leverage your marketing. And we'll dive into that today mm -hmm. about really becoming omnipresent in your marketplace um and be on surround sound in the lives of your ideal client but without you generating everything we're going to talk about systems automation delegation all that jazz today and really understanding that marketing is a divine tool a sacred tool if done properly then we move to leveraging your accountability see a lot of business owners think that to move to 10x, like let's say you're 100,000 or 150,000 in your business, you think a million, that's 10x. They think, oh my God, I can't do it. I, I, I cannot slay that dragon myself. Um, therefore, I won't go for big numbers. Leverage your accountability is where you bring every, you, you have built this world-class team of part-time people who are not expensive uh, and, there's a way that you can leverage the accountability on that team so everybody in your business is building the business with you and for you you're not carrying everything on your shoulders it changes everything this leads us to having the time since everybody's building the business with you and for you having the time to truly differentiate yourself in the marketplace. So you leverage your differentiation by um, really noticing what separates you from everybody else, all your colleagues and competitors in your industry, and really tapping into your unique brilliance, um, all the things that were divinely given to you that perhaps you take for granted, but, but leveraging that differentiation, that gift, so that essentially even though you never set out to you uh you become an industry change agent and you have no competitors once that's in place it's time to leverage your lifestyle and this isn't necessarily about having the la uh, 
the laptop lifestyle as much as it is about bringing a second in command to run your business. You, again, it's not somebody full time. It's not somebody expensive. It's somebody who is wired to run your business for you and with you while you're still fully in control, but removing yourself even more from the day to day operations of your business so that you can think about what it will take to get to a million in your business. There is not a single woman who I have not taken to a million who hasn't implemented this last step, really all the steps. And this allows you because you've removed yourself more and more from the day to day to only work. I only work two to three hours a day. One of those hours is with you today. And um, it allows you to really uh, be you can create another business revenue stream if you want. You can spend time with the people you love. You can give back. You can read. You can not feel guilty taking Friday as a spa day. This is about being of service in the world, helping more people, increasing your earnings and your freedom and your meaning and fulfillment without being chained to your business. It is it is an eight step methodology that works. And I don't know anyone else who's offering this. It is magical. So those are the eight steps. I hope that you read more about them in the book. I know you've read the book, Robin. Yeah, I, I read them. And I, I, I really hope that the, that the listeners will pick up your book as well, because it really is insightful. And I love what you said at the beginning hmm. that they seem basic. They seem simple. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If you're sitting there thinking that they're simple, they're basic, you've already got this. You need to dive deeper into them because your mind is telling you that you've already got this. But if you aren't growing at the rate that Fabian has just discussed, you know, going into six figures, upward six figures, seven figures, then you don't have these things. And it's really important to, to really Check in with your belief system and your mindset, because if you're sitting there thinking, I don't need this, I don't need this book. Okay, maybe you don't need this book, but you definitely need to evaluate each one of those eight steps and where you truly are with those in your business. Okay, let's dive into marketing. And first, I want to say this too. This is kind of funny. You mentioned the Friday spa days and I'm looking at your skin and I'm like, I can tell she gives herself the gift of spa days because your skin is amazing. <laughs> That's nice of you. You guys will have to go watch the YouTube video. So you see, <laughs> um, okay, I digress. But anyway, I had to give you that compliment. So let's dive into the, uh, to transforming our relationships with marketing. Yes. So I have been, so I've been teaching about marketing for 22 years because the client attraction system started as a um, marketing training, what I had done to fill my practice. And I, I'll tell you about a story. I used to do all these three day events. I've done 21 three day events in, in my in the last 15 years. And I'll never forget the time that this one woman re, um, walked up to me the night before we were doing this three day event on how to get clients. And, and I said, So are you are you excited to be here? And she's like, frankly, no. You know, and I didn't expect that. And I said, okay, how come? She goes, I hate marketing. I was like, oh my God. She said, I hate marketing. I don't want to do it. I wish I could delegate it. I'm like, yeah, but you really can't delegate marketing completely. The, the, the essence of you needs to be in the marketing. I said, just give me these three days. I will have you fall in love with marketing. She's like, that's a tall order because I do not see it. Fast forward three days, Robin. She comes up to me. She grabs my arms, like, you know, grabs me by the arms. And she says, you were right. I love marketing. And I didn't realize how beautiful it could be. And I just want to start by saying that your relationship with marketing is more important than your actions. There are plenty of people who abuse marketing. It's like power. You can use power to 
hurt people or you can use power to help people. Marketing in the same, is the same way. And 15 years ago, I started talking about the fact that the pendulum is shifting in marketing. Whereby in the, in the 2000s, people were beating others over the head with a two by four, wah, wah, bye, bye. We can smell that a mile away. Like we can smell, you know, like when, when you're trying on a pair of white pants at a department store and the sales gal keeps telling you they look so good on you and you're like, stop lying to me, right? It's like, come on, I see you a mile away. It's the same thing with, right? It's the same thing. I, especially white pants. Like this, it takes a certain body to pull off white it pants takes a well. thick fabric. <laughs> Yes. And so the men don't get this, but no, no, <laughs> women not at all. Uh -huh. So in, in the same way, we can see somebody selling hard and taking us for fools from a mile away. That pendulum has shifted. We, especially as women, love to buy. We just don't like to be sold to or taken for idiots. So if you think about how you like to be sold to think about it you like to be sold to generously honestly when somebody says to you you know what if can i just tell you the truth i i while i appreciate those white pants that like i love the cut on the rack it just doesn't do you any justice can i go and get you something else that i think will make you look like like a queen what do you think about that salesperson? You'd be like, yes, yeah. thank you. I'll buy you. whatever I'll you want me to buy. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy whatever you want me to buy and I'll, I'll give you an unsolicited monopoly. I will not go to any other store just yeah. because you told me the truth. So we want authentic marketers and we want valuable, kind, generous, loving, transparent marketers. And that's the kind of marketer we must become. If we want to attract clients consistently, it's about shifting our relationship with marketing and shifting uh, how we show up as marketers. It's about unlearning all the, and I love the guys, okay? I love men. I live with my husband and two boys. Uh, you know, <laughs> I love the men, but I don't want to bro market, bro sell, no. bro launch, bro run my business. I am a woman. I am I am powerfully feminine. I am I have healthy ambition, but I am rooted in love and generosity and kindness and and in service. And that's the kind of marketing that you want to be. So, there's a couple things about the energy of marketing. I talk about all of this or a lot of this in the book, but I'll throw in today some things that are not in the leveraged business book. The first is be the marketer you want to be, um, you want as somebody who would sell to you, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you decide what kind of marketer you want to be. And many years ago, and I've been in all the, the male masterminds that you probably know of. I've, uh, I've spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on learning from men because there wasn't a kind, spiritual, generous, successful female mentor that had a lovely marriage and several kids that she wasn't available. So I had to figure <laughs> out how to translate what the guys were teaching into something that that went along with my values and i just decided and i invite all of you listening today to make a list of what kind of marketer you want to be generous kind valuable uh loving spiritual uh funny wh whatever you want to be and just decide to be that. One of the things that I've learned, again, you, we, we've heard this before, but perhaps not under the umbrella of marketing, is be who you really are and client attraction becomes big time easy. When you're trying to be somebody you're not, or you're trying to apply a formula, it's like, again, I'm gonna talk about shopping. 
if you go and you try on a pair of heels at, at the at the department store and they pinch, they're it, they're going to continue to pinch when you're walking in pavement. You've mm -hmm. got to make it feel right to you before it will feel right to anybody else. So that's number one. Number two is I realize that marketing is a divine tool. And here's what I mean. If you think about, if you approach your business and, and what you offer is here to really be of service to other people, it is valuable. It is going to change somebody's life. It is your moral and divine obligation to let those who are waking up in the middle of the night because they have a problem that you can solve with your eyes closed. It is not their job to find you. It is your job to be so visible that they trip over you and say, oh, she's the one for me. Your marketing message must be clear, must be infused with so much love and belief in them that they have perhaps at one point a tear in their eye and say, she's the one for me. And when you understand that it's your job to be visible, not because it's about accumulation, putting more money in your bank. Of course, we talk about getting to seven figures, but seven figures, multiple six figures is a consequence. It is a consequence of being valuable, adding so much more value in the marketplace than you are now that you make good money as a result. But it is not about fleecing people and it's not about like, how much can I take, right? Allow the divine to give you the money as a result, as a compensation, as a reward for changing people's lives. So. When you understand that that's the case, there are people at three o'clock in the morning who need you, you realize it's not about you. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter if you've got the extra 15 pounds. It doesn't matter if it, it, you don't like your voice. It doesn't matter if you're worried about the haters online. It's you, you are then, understanding that your message does not come from you, it comes through you from perhaps something bigger than yourself. And you realize that you are a vessel and your job is to put into words the, the thing that that woman needs so that she can step into her own bigger future through you to create a transformation in her life. Yes. And something I want to add to that is that, you know, we talk a lot about personal brand on this show and that is really what other people think, say, and feel about you. So if that's the case, your marketing efforts are helping you to communicate that. So if there is someone out there that has a problem, what makes you unique? Because the things that make you unique, the things that differentiate you from everyone else out there are what she sees that she needs, mm -hmm. that you can help her with. Because only you have those unique characteristics. Only you have those unique gifts. Only you have the ability to solve her problem the way you solve her problem. Yes. And I, I always refer to it as a mag like a magnet, you know, like we have this magnet in us that is our ability to solve a problem, mm -hmm. to provide a solution. And those are our gifts, right? Then over here, this person has a magnet that is a problem that they need a solution for. And they have to come together, but they can't come together unless they find each other. And it's our job to make sure that the other magnet <laughs> is being pulled toward us, right? So um, I love this. And I think, you know, we hear the term marketing, you have to market. And I think it because of, like you mentioned, the bro marketing and all of these things that we've seen and heard or perhaps been experienced ourselves, it has a negative connotation. But really, if we change our mindset around, it is a way to use our gifts to tell the world that we're here for them. Mm 
And when we do that from a place of kindness and love and generosity, and I love how you phrased it, it's not about the money. The money comes as a result of our actions and as a result of providing value, serving other people, helping other people. And if you come from that place on your heart, it's going to flow much easier. Abundance is going to come much easier. Because you're following that calling, you're following what God has pulled you into the purpose that you have here on this earth. So I love that you said that. And I think it's so empowering. And for those listening, I encourage you to do the exercise to write down all of those characteristics that make you unique and all of the ways that you want to market yourself, the the marketer that you want to be perceived as kind, loving, generous, intelligent, unique, authentic, genuine, graceful, any of those words that, you know, maybe it's, it's resiliency, maybe it's perseverance because you've been through whatever you've been through on your journey. But each one of those things that you've experienced has given you some unique gift, some unique quality that you can now use to apply to serving other people. Okay. Fabian, this has been amazing. Do you have any last minute, like, Words of wisdom that you want to share? Just just remember that it's not about you. It's about them. It will never be about you. It's always about the people that you're here to serve. And do marketing in service and with love. Um, Be omnipresent in the sense that you are adding so much value all over the place. And you you set it up, you set systems up for this, that she will, your ideal client will say you're the one. I'll just, I want to leave with this one, okay? I want you to imagine that you're picking up your phone and you're calling the divine. And you're, you say, God, am I, am I supposed to play small in my marketing? Or would you rather that I really take the message out there and reach as many people as I can. Imagine what God's answer would be. And then heed that answer. And my sense is that God would say, get your message out there as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to, I want to share this, this quote from your book, because I just loved this. And and your friend said this to you. Um, when you're interested, you do what's convenient. When you're committed, you do whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. And that goes right in line with what you just said. Mm-hmm. And just so you know, everyone, that quote was from John Asaroff. Did I say that right? Asaroff. Yes. Asaroff, He's a wonderful yeah. person. Yeah. Um, okay. So Fabian, where can the listeners find you and learn more from you, connect with you? I know you're on Instagram. Yes. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook as well. Honestly, the best place to go, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Fabian Fredrickson, the best place to go is boldheart.com. And there you can find a few things. Number one, you can get the book there. Um, I believe it is still available for free on the website. Um, all you do is meet me halfway and just pay. I think it's like two or four dollars for shipping. Um, so go get go get the book on boldheart.com. While you're there, there is a, a mini documentary. I think it's nine minutes long on the first page if you scroll down. And this is the secret sauce to how women grow exponentially in the company of other women. And I've yet to see a woman who doesn't get moved because there's so much truth telling in that. Go watch that mini documentary. And because I believe that it's all about mindset, I, and what we do is normalize that women can be at seven figures and have a loving family and be a good person. Part of normalizing that is to see that other women have done it. So there might be a tab at the top of boldheart.com. Go look at the reviews and, and the stories of the other women solely for the purpose of stretching what you believe could be possible for yourself as you implement these eight activators. 
That's mm. it. I love that. No one has ever suggested that on the show before. I mm. love that to go and see what's possible just by reading other people's stories. And it's not about reading their story and thinking, oh, well, I can't do that because I whatever. It is truly reading those stories and seeing what's possible and then applying it for yourself, not comparing yourself. No, it's about finding the evidence. See, we can find the evidence that it won't work. Absolutely, and it's easier to find that evidence. Easier. I have chills just even saying that, but when you can, when you understand that there's a whole world that you may not know about of really kind, normal, non-ego driven women who have a healthy, healthy ambition, but like healthy, you know, in check, who want, who have big hearts, who want to add value and they want a meaningful life and they're at multiple six and seven figures and they lean on each other. And there is this whole community of women who are doing it. Then you start thinking, wow, maybe I could do it too. And it's a mind stretching exercise. It's a heart stretching exercise because the world can beat you down to have you question whether this is even worth it, right? All the long hours working on evenings and weekends, underpaying yourself, feeling overwhelmed. There are so there are so many times when you could say, God, I don't know if this is really worth it. But when you get you find the evidence that others have crossed the river and are making it happen, that's what happened to me. And it changed everything for me. I be- yeah. I believed it myself finally. Yeah. That's beautiful. All right, listeners, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much again for being here and for just joining us on this journey, right? We're all in this together. And if we hold each other up, we'll all reach the success goals that we have on our heart. If you enjoyed this episode, I ask that you please share it with your friends, family members, whoever you know that might be trying to start or grow a business. And also a rating and review would be so, so appreciated if you would just take one second to go and click that five-star review, and then leave us a note to tell us what your thoughts were on the show. Fabian, thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure. I enjoy your message. I enjoyed your book. And I thank you for spreading your light into the world. Thank you, Robin.